solar plane or ecliptic, uh, so does the moon, essentially. However, the moon strays plus or minus 2.5 degrees from the ecliptic, so it's, you know, a 5 degree range. Uh, but essentially, the moon is on that same ecliptic as the Earth. So that's what we mean by celestial alignment. Now, the same concept holds true for lunar eclipses where a full moon is diametrically opposed to the sun on a flat earth model, but erratically located in implausible alignments on any spherical representation of the earth's shadow. This is the infamous umbra effect being altered on the moon's surface. This is where NASA only casts shadows of doubt on the conceptual alignment. It totally obliterates the standard schematics viability which was apparently created by some shady characters, pun intended. Furthermore, on a globe model, the points of convergence with the sun and moon in alignment can never intersect. By this, for the four cities with historic sun-moon data spreading from the southern tip of South America to the northern portion of Canada were used to include one at the equatorial line to represent an intermediate position between extreme reference points and a supplementary location used as confirmation for the other reference points as shown here. In order to demonstrate the impartiality of eclipse data used for this investigation, all total solar eclipses to include both annular and hybrid type events were used between 1980 and events projected by the year 2020 and the same yearly span for lunar eclipses although partial and prenumbral eclipses were excluded due to any inaccuracies that could be speculated if used to support final results. A total of 70 events, that's 70 events, 26 lunar and 44 solar were studied and evaluated. In every instance, the results were not only a 100% confirmation of a flat Earth model, a, as conclusive as that finding was, they categorically proved the mathematical impossibility of any data being possibly applied to a globe Earth model in their totality. The latter declarative statement is best demonstrated by using the old school, pun intended, globe model term terminology, and at this point reference is only made in that capacity using worldly definitions in terms of hemispheres and regions above and below the equator, with reference made to the conventionally accepted north and south poles located at the so-called top and bottom of the globe model. As shown by these eclipses with signature profiles exclusively across the polar regions, it is not possible to apply sun-moon positioning data to a sphere during these events, as the earthly portion depicted in shadow cannot be the result of a solar source point angled orthogonally or 90 degrees from the sunlit direction. The same conceptual findings hold true to ecliptical profiles spanning from relatively far above to well below the equator, as shown in these NASA figures. Again, this isn't just one or two isolated instances, but something identified with 100% consistency across the board application for every eclipse after closely researching just those four locations, which rest upon us essentially the same meridian line. Imaginably, the same exact principle could apply to any triangulation of points for any eclipse event from locations along some other meridian line. In short, using the conventionally accepted, assumed theoretical representation for solar eclipses used in today's classrooms from kindergarten through 12 to the collegiate level by all kindergartners through PhD candidates worldwide, as well as those employed by businesses strictly using the predicate of this astronomical absurdity as their primary vocational tool, plus all media historically covering eclipses under the same precept. Lines of convergence for a solar eclipse alone 
where the sun, moon, earth alignment during a new moon are mathematically impossible on a globe model with the sun 93 million miles away being transited at exactly the right point at exactly the right time by a moon 240,000 miles away and yet solar and lunar eclipses are equally as likely over a hundred year period. Case closed. Final verdict, your honor, on record, for the record, forever and evermore, period, end of story. To repeat this, although not any less doubtful but imaginably more complex to fully perceive, is the lunar eclipse, where the Earth's umbra is cast during a full moon. This is equally impossible due to the fictitious alignment and geographical implausibility of that depiction. And call it like it is, NASA has finally been caught off guard, red tape handed, and should be charged with drunken deriving, as nothing so incredibly dubious and unwittingly stupid as the conventional model involving the spinning sphere Earth has ever been proven true, nor have any of the fundamental tenets of the model, including but not limited to curvature, axial rotation, orbital velocities, solar velocities, galactic velocities, gravity, space time, big bang etc. All of that is just simply theory and assumption, see? That cult-like religious foundation is nothing more than a delirium a la delirium encapsulated and entrapped under a baseless firmament of confirmed lies. And $5,000 says so now with about 5,000 more reasons why a thousand colleges and universities nationwide have been issued a challenge to disprove the flat earth reality or defend the heliocentric hypothesis since early February using NASA Eclipse data and not one science department has accepted the challenge or even responded to the open invite for debate although reasons for this avoidance were fairly anticipated during its inception. Some may have heard the $5,000 NASA Eclipse Challenge mentioned on some chat programs and some radio shows to date, but now, after each physics and astronomy department and college president at respective academic institutions nationwide have been given formal notice of this challenge in multiple letters sent via uh, United States Postal Service under separate cover along with a CD of the investigation and supporting documentation included therein, all used to reference those same findings and conclusions. In other words, technically, no science department in America can conceivably argue ignorance of the current Flat Earth movement and the community of truth-oriented, fact-finding missionaries willing to aggressively challenge those being caught, wittingly protecting the World Wide Web of lies, which is really more like getting entrapped by their own www.matrix world of physically impossible, spherical, spinning Earth and one that's shamelessly promoted by every teaching establishment and kept under submission by institutional propaganda in MK Ultra spectacular fashion, literally. But for now and, and for hereafter, uh, the good news isn't no news any longer, but what really is newsworthy is the exponential increase and momentous acclaim of reality TV that's actually getting produced by real YouTube videos, by realistic enterprises feeding the masses with good stuff for everyone to actively start supporting plus approximately 850 nationwide TV news departments from coast to coast, including Alaska and Hawaii, have now been equally provided adequate background info and data related to the NASA challenge, and that it's been submitted uniformly at the collegiate level more like a dare than a carnival game. By this, the possibility of a winner to the challenge is mathematically impossible, where all along the proverbial flat earth antagonist using mathematics as their fundamental tool and argumentative talking point against a plain earth model has done absolutely nothing but perjure themselves, regardless of the shade, color, or hue of the rhetoric. Will the colorful talking heads, the blind, mindless proponents for the scientific and mathematical modeling of Earth ignore 100% NASA solar lunar data which irrefutably supports a flat Earth model, not a globe? That's the only possible tactic to remain a glober. Bury your head in the sand and ignore the data. 
I should remind you that this tactic, while amusing and ironic, is indeed the opposite of science and mathematics. Um, plugging your ears and closing your eyes, singing la 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 la, is not debate, nor is it science. Indeed, ignorance is the only possible avenue Globers have to retain their self-proclaimed intellect and prestige. It's sort of hard to call one intelligent and prestigious with their rear end sticking up in the air and their head upside down in a cosmos of grains of sand. Billions and billions of grains of sand, and yes, Carl Sagan counted. At this point, anybody and everyone who wants to actively participate in a universal grassroots effort to spread truth to every corner of the world we all live on, all, three, all 33 corners, uh, pun intended, uh, your involvement can be as simple as copying and pasting questions about the NASA challenge in the comment section of practically every collegiate and university physics astronomy department website and inquire why no one has taken advantage of the $5,000 offer if indeed math proves a globe and is supposed to be extremely easy to prove using basic mathematical equations. Just ask Jeff C. or something colors, I think it's pink's rhetoric, red's rhetoric. Red's rhetoric. If you can stomach them throwing up their hands and uttering their gut instincts, that always seems to go completely awry. And by the way, until Red's rhetoric eats his socks, he has no credibility as far as I'm concerned. So, and uh, you know what I'm talking about, Red. Anyway, uh, bottom line is, this world, the affirmation and confirmation of the study used as foundation for the challenge was one small step for a mind to consider, but can be one giant leap for all humankind to accept once truth gets universally applied to every person who has eyes that see and ears to hear the word. Earth was most definitely created by some supernatural force, uniquely and emphatically formed by an enigmatic, sovereign, unprecedented by any advanced civilization, or produced by Hollywood elite for a military-grade propaganda. The globe earth theory generates false scarcity while strangling the people into perpetual debt slavery worldwide using fiat currency plus a cachet of hyperboles and exceedingly deceptive budgets funding a long-planned, expertly steered, nefarious global agenda, no thanks to the likes of Neil deGrasse, for the ultimate purpose of separating us spiritually from our creator, mocking and heckling we who speak the obvious, simple truth, which is backed by the plain facts and data. Indeed, this globe-earth lie appears more and more to be an integral part of the grandiose deception, a strong delusion that has fooled the entire world, and even the very elect, for a time at least. Hashtag Tyson's a flat earth chicken is not meaning to leave a foul mouth perception of reality in your mouth, but call it like it is. People like Tyson fight dirty, using ad hominem sound bites as opposed to sound logic to prove their point that purely contradict the unsolicited, well founded dissemination of scientific fact and insult everyone in earshot away from reality. Total bollocks, as they say in some UK Ultra arenas, total bullshit in the land of MK Ultra USA. Flattery got him everywhere, including fame, but the flat truth will bring intellectually celibate entities like Tyson or Krauss back down to earth. Everybody, please join us in this international campaign of extraordinary proportions. Post your comments on the Facebook page, $5,000 NASA Eclipse Challenge, and get involved in any way possible from spreading the word to make your own YouTube video, uh, mirror this one, record dialogue with those defending the globe Earth model, such as a science department personnel or staff at local observatories who have their entire profession based on that man-made duplicity and mathematical absurdity and impossibility. Send inquiries related to the challenge to jock.clunet at aol.com. That's J-A-C-Q-U-E-S dot K-L-U. N is in Nathan, E is in Echo, T is in Tom at aol.com. 
thanks so much for tuning in. As always, be sure and spread the word, spread the world, and peace out.